Welcome to the Middle Room Workshop. Today we are going to talk about curve, how to measure it and how to go about it in order to get a perfect fit each single time. Without further ado, let's get into it. Let's talk about curve. What is curve? Why do we care about curve and how we can measure it? Curve represents the width of the material that is being removed by any cutting process. If you've been cutting wood with any cutting tools, uh, you know that the line traced by the tool will have some thickness and some material uh, will be removed from it. And as a matter of fact, you produce sawdust. Now, with laser cutting technology, there is no difference. Although laser cutting technology offers uh, the smallest curve available in the industry, you still will have a small amount of curve there. And that's given by the width of your laser cutting through the material. Now, compared to other cutting technologies, however, uh, laser cutting technology will have a different amount of curve depending on the parameters of the machine and the material. In particular, uh, will depend on the uh, material type, the thickness of the material, the focal point, or in other words, uh, the position in the material where the focal point happened to fall relative to one of the surfaces, uh, the speed and power of your laser, the type of laser, so if that is a CO2 laser or a diode laser or a fiber laser, and sometimes can also be affected by the grain of the material. So if you're working with grain type of materials like wood, uh, you will find out that sometimes the grain uh, will affect the curve. And so uh, you will have a different curve value if you're cutting perpendicular to the grain or uh, parallel to the grain. Why do we care about curve? Curve turns out to be of great importance when you start designing components and parts that are meant to be assembled together. And so that's when you want to understand what is the right amount of tolerance in order to have the correct type of fit. And so this is the reason why uh, knowing the curve of your machine and the material with the specific settings, it's very important. How can we measure curve? Curve could be measured directly at the cut line. However, because of the relatively small size, it's impractical with typical uh, measuring tools. So the only way uh, to measure curve is to have uh, what is called a future of size or basically to have two op opposite faces that can be placed uh, in the jaw of a caliper and to basically measure what's the difference between uh, the ideal dimension or the dimension that you've been providing in your design through your uh, software and the actual manufactured dimension. And so by doing that, uh, you are able to define uh, the difference and the difference will correspond to the curve. Uh, obviously, uh, you will need to repeat this for both directions, so for the x and the y axis, so that you will be able to measure the curve for the both directions. Now, I've set up a very simple uh, template in Light Barn that you can uh, cut, and so you will have three squares that you then measure in both directions. And you can then take the mean or the average of the three dimensions for each directions and to get your curve. Obviously, if you want to have the uh, tolerance for uh, a single line, you will need to divide the curve into half, into 50%. All right, once you're done with the cutting, you should end up with something like this. And if the power settings were right, they should detach pretty neatly. Now, the first thing that I like to do when I do this kind of testing is to mark on the uh, back side what were the speed and power settings for this test, because the curve will be dependent on that. And so 
Um, I did this with the NetJet 40 watt module. That's going to be for my reference. 150 slash um, that was 80% power. And I will do this in all of them. So I will rotate them so that I don't lose them. Now, once I'm done with that, I can start uh, dimensioning this uh, squares. So to do that, I can use a simple caliper. If you have a digital one, it's better. It will make your life easier. Otherwise, a typical uh, caliper will be okay. Um, if you have a micron, I would suggest you not to use that because uh, you know, due to the tolerance of the machine, you won't be able to replicate that kind of precision. So you don't really need to go uh, that crazy with dimensioning. So let's power it up. Let's set the zero and let's start measuring. And so we'll start with the y-axis, which happen to be also the axis of my grain. And so without applying much pressure, I like to put the um, square in the jaw here on the flushed side of the jaw. There we go. So 1987, 1991. And so I'll then take a pencil and I will write them da that down. So. Nineteen eighty seven and nineteen ninety one, and so uh, the way I write it will correspond also to the direction that I've measured, and so I'll do the same with the other three. So bear in mind that the curve will have some taper into it, so you want to get as flushed as possible with with the faces with the bottom faces of the jaw here so that you can get that. And the other thing is that you need to make sure that when you um, apply the settings on your machine, uh, the cut has to be clean all the way through because if you have any burr in there, any imperfection, okay, like for example, this one over here. So this imperfection will actually um, alter your measurement and so you want to pay attention to that now once i have my values here i can uh, do the mean so i'll need a piece of paper <clears throat> and then i will run so that's gonna be let's say this is my x direction because it's actually both of them 19.9 so this is curve x and y they are the same and so my curve it's uh, 0 0.1 okay now if I'm interested to apply the tolerance I will be interested to 50% that and so my tolerance when I take dimensioning will be equal to 0 0.05 millimeter so this is what I'm uh, looking for. Now I can take this number and I can start running some testing with that. Once you know your curve, you will need to understand what's the tolerance that you need to apply to your design in order to have uh, the uh, desired fit. And before to do that, you will need to understand what kind of fit you're looking for in your design. So if you're looking for a clearance type of fit, that means that uh, the two parts come loosely together. If you're looking for a transitional type of fit, that means that the parts are of the exact size and so they will fit together but still they will be able to go in and out easily. Or if you're looking for an interference type of fit and so that means that one of the future is bigger than uh, the other one and so they will need to uh, be put together with some force. And so most likely that's the type of fit that you're looking for if you're going to design, for example, uh, finger joint uh, stuff. So boxes, shelves, and assembly in general. Now, once you know the type of fit that you're looking for, you will need to test that out. 
I've set up for this another template in Lightbar. I've designed uh, some uh, finger joints and I've applied the curve as well as some tolerance. Alright, once you're done with cutting, you should end up with something like this. And if your power settings were right, as soon as you remove the support, everything should come off fairly easily. So let me spread this nicely out on the mat and so we can see how to work with it. Now with this simple setup, you will be able to test uh, the clearance in both directions and in different ways. And so let's go ahead and see how that works. So let's start off with the first two joints here, the first joint. Now, uh, this one has no tolerance in it, so that's basically the net measurement. And so we will see that we have a little bit of play there, which correspond to our curve in that direction, okay? Similarly, on the other direction, again, we'll see that there is some play in there, okay? Now, the next joints will uh, start accounting for curve and also there is a little bit of extra material there so to try to stack the part together. Now, in my vertical direction, there is still a little bit of play though it's not as much as without uh, accounting for curve. On the other direction, the other direction is a little bit tight already and as you can see, the part are holding together. In fact, I've marked it up with pencil. And let's try this out in the correct direction. And it goes quite nicely, but the joint, it's flexing a little bit. So I'm not really uh, happy with that. Now let's go ahead with the next. Now here, there is a little bit more material again in the vertical direction. Now there is no play, but I can still take this in and out effortlessly. So that's not exactly what I'm looking for, for a, a snap connection. Let's see the transversal one. Now here, this got pretty tight. And so let's try now to connect it in the right direction. I think that this is pretty good. There is a minimum amount of flex, which is okay for being unglued. So this is going to be our way. So we'll mark this. Oop. Okay. Now let's go ahead with the last one. So let's see how this goes. Okay, so this one is holding up tightly. So now let's put it in the other direction. And that is basically what I'm looking for. It's tight. There is just minimum amount of flex, which is very good. And so I'll go ahead and mark this one. Okay. And also try the other direction, also I already found what I'm looking for. Nope, the other one is not even getting inside. I'll need to force it, but I'm not willing to do that. <clears throat> now we can test the slot instead. And so that means when you have a finger getting inside of a rectangular slot. Now this one is being uh, cut without any tolerance. So you will have the dimension that you gave less the curve that's going to be the actual width of this finger and the same is valid for this so the actual dimension and here oops, here as you can see it it has quite a lot of play okay doesn't matter the direction on the other side there is a little bit less but yeah so that's not the one that we want to go with. Now here I have applied some 
tolerance accounting for curve and here is al already better okay but it's still coming out fairly easily without effort now let's go to the next level up again this one is it's tighter but still it's playing so I don't like that neither and let's try now for the last one okay I think that the last one it's quite good so that's what we want to do so the idea here is that when we design this kind of joint we want to have the finger on the width that we have chosen so say this is 10 millimeter so here I didn't apply any uh, adjustment and so to apply the adjustment into the hole I think this is the best thing uh, you could eventually apply the adjustment to the finger if you have some uh, um, mechanical requirement say if you want these components to uh, have a stronger hold okay but in general for this type of things I think that uh, this is the way to go now what else we can test as you can see here I have uh, uh, cut holes now this all has net size that means again I don't have any curve uh, applied any tolerance so that's uh, I think 12 millimeter and so you can see that that's where it came from and it's going out fairly easily and now here I've applied uh, the curve from the y direction okay that means uh, the vertical curve then the transversal curve and this hole instead it's uh, actually not a circle but is uh, an ellipse and so I have the major axis which is the vertical one with uh, with a larger curve and uh, minor axis with the minor curve okay so to account for both curve the difference in curve in the both directions and so I can now take this put it here and I can see already that with this a uh, little bit of tolerance here it's staying this one will be tighter so again it's staying inside quite nicely and this is the one that accounts for both and as you can see stays inside nicely and here you can see that if I push this towards the bottom you can see the clearance there and if I push this towards the side you can see the much smaller clearance on the transversal direction and so you will want to uh, go ahead test for the curve of your machine first and then to design your actual uh, fit test and as you can see here I have other that I have created earlier where they were accounting for different tolerance and so all of them turns out to be slacked at the end so there was quite a little bit of play there so couldn't get the right uh, sweet spot let's say sweet dimension this is even less and this was the one of the first one and as you can see I've been improving the design so that I could take into account um, other parts of joinery and so this is basically all all right and that's the way you go about it so as you can see it's all a matter of cutting measuring right and testing and once you get your right spot your right fit tolerance you'll be certain to have uh, the right parameters to have the perfect joint each single time I hope you found this video helpful if you have any comment leave them in the uh, comment section below and if you want to see more video like this one don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Ciao for now.